Hey everyone, my name's Jade, and today I was looking back at the year, the new year is around the corner, it's going to be 2019 soon, and I have done so many wild things. And I've done murals, and I've done group exhibitions, and I've been a part of so many different things this year, but there's one thing that really took it out of me and was the wildest, craziest thing I've done in my entire art journey, and this year I threw my first solo exhibition. All on my own. I curated it, I found the venue, I did everything myself, I have got the people there. <laughs> it was crazy. So I thought, well, I want to sit down in front of a camera, I want to talk about it. I want to talk about like what it took and like how it was and like just how wild it was. Because there's some real <laughs> there's some really funny things that happened. And I think that, I don't know, I just think it'll make an interesting story. So stay tuned. Without further ado, let's get right into it. In August of 2018, I threw my first solo exhibition. I know, it was scary, I wasn't prepared, I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> I called it Earth Invaders. <laughs> it was a very spontaneous, wild idea. I, at the time I'd watched so many other artists around me throw their, their first solo exhibitions and they were killing and it looked so awesome and, and so much fun. And I just was like, I want to do one. I want to do one for me. I want just my art in the room. I had been a part of so many group exhibitions at the time. I was just thinking to myself, I've never had my art alone in a room just for people to just look at nothing but my work. And I was scared at the time. I, of course, I was, Brian, you're going to hear that a lot. I'm always scared. I'm a huge scaredy cat. I know I'm, there's something super intimidating about having just your art on the wall. Like, if people don't like it, then there's nothing else for them to like instead, you know, so it's a bit scary. I had planned for the exhibition to be in August because in my city, which is Adelaide, we throw something called Sala, which is the South Australian Living Arts Festival. I had thrown another exhibition for Sala the year prior, and it was a group show. So I decided that seeing as Sala's coming up in August, I will have my exhibition be a part of the South Australian Living Arts Festival and it'll be great because I will be, I don't know, I just thought it would be a good idea. <laughs> so what you have to do to be a part of this festival is you have to go to their website and there's a long list of, well, this year it wasn't that long. They have a list on their website of venues to pick from. So you can email them, tell them your exhibition proposal um, and your idea. And if they're interested, there's something they want to be on board with, they will co they collab with you. And so they are pairing artists up with venues in the city and they put them together. Wow. <laughs> it's the artist's job usually to um, contact the venue, but it can go the other way. So I felt as I am not a very big artist at all, I'm super small, I'm just starting out. I need a place that was convenient for people to go, so aka the city. I needed to be in the city and I was looking through this like list from, on the website and a lot of them, a lot of them were like uh, wineries, a lot of them were in the country. Uh, I was, you know, I was like, I'm not that big enough to have people get, you know, be dragged. <laughs> they won't drag themselves out to my exhibition because let's be honest, I'm really a nobody. <laughs> you know, I want it to be accessible to as many people as possible. So I went through the thing and I had, you know, I uh, found a few other places, there was another place called uh, was like a design place and then they, I emailed them and they rejected me because they found out my artwork was really weird and then I contacted another place and they rejected me and then I found a basement which was a place that I had tried to contact the year before and they never replied to my email. Um, don't worry, my emails, I feel like I structured them really well, not my fault, they just probably, maybe they didn't see it, maybe they just weren't interested in my idea last year because it was really crazy and out there last year like this one isn't fucking crazy and out there, am I right? Uh, I emailed them and they got back to me and they were super interested in my idea. They uh, they loved my artwork, they loved that it was alien themed, the name Earth Invaders, they loved that. And so they were like super into the idea of my exhibition and I was like really excited about it. I was like, finally someone will give me a, a fair go, you know? Oh, so, so Australian, so Australian, <laughs> giving me a fair go. Anyway, so they emailed me back and in the email, they told me that they were interested in using uh, virtual reality in an exhibition format. They thought that maybe I could use virtual reality in my exhibition somehow. And I was, I was, I was like so engaged when they said that. I was so excited. I was like, this is really one of a kind. This could be amazing. Like I said before, I live in a super small city and 
not a lot of crazy stuff happens here. Sure, there's like murals and we have some really talented influential artists come from here. Like Sia, she's from my city. When they told me about them wanting to use virtual reality in exhibition format, I was so, so excited. I was like, yes, 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 I, I want to use it 100%. Let's talk about it. So we agreed to meet up and I went there and we got to talking. They showed me the venue, which was pretty much like a facility. They had like green screens and like uh, amazing photography equipment. It was incredible. And their gallery space was fit with down lights. It had a slim line system with hooks. It was fantastic and perfect for what I wanted to do. And the owners were so nice. They had children. They were just a fantastic family who owned the place. And it was right in the heart of the city. We have this one large, well, it's, it's okay. It's like a medium sized mall. Cause like I said, my city's small called Rundle Mall and it, it was like right off of Rundle Mall just down a little alleyway and it wasn't like on a main street but it was just down like at the end of an alleyway it was super sweet and I loved it and I thought it was just perfect so I fell in love with it we we said yes and the fee was super small to exi exhibit there as much as I would love to have exhibited for free since, seeing as it was a part of Solar Festival and I had to pay for registrations and everything like that I wish it was for free, but they were like, it's a small fee. And I went, okay, that's fine. Cause I really wanted to make it happen. And I fell in love with the place, you know? With that being said, the exhibition was going ahead and I was so excited and I was really proud of myself for it. So they suggested using VR and I was like, how, how are we going to use VR in exhibition? Like, what's your idea? And she went, well, there's this program called Tilt Brush, which is run through Google, that you can create these like really awesome like sculptures, like painting sculptures. And there's lots of different effects. You can paint like out of space. And I was like, as soon as she said that, like fireworks went off and I was so excited because one, my exhibition's called Earth Invaders. It's about aliens, it's out of space. It's about how my characters are like alien human hybrid little babies. So I was thinking, it adds another layer of interest, it engages people, it has people doing something, you're not just getting bored standing around. I was excited and they were like, what we want you to do is we want to create a viewable video of you painting in VR that people can watch how you created it. They had a whole room with like green screens and cameras fitted out. I'm not very good at explaining, I had a lot of help. I had help from her husband who was like a, a computer engineer or something like that. I think, I'm sorry if, you, if I got that wrong. You were amazing, I love you. I'm sorry if I got that wrong. And I had my partner as well, who's super great with computers and stuff like that. And I'm seeing him with her grandma. I'm like, I paint in acrylic paint. I don't know what everyone's doing. <laughs> so I had those people and they were helping me so much and I was very thankful for it. And so they had this whole room with green screens and cameras and they were going to film me painting, but it looks like I'm painting in VR, in Tilt Brush. Um, it was really cool. We were, that was our plan to do that. And we were going to show it on a big projection screen that they had inside the gallery space. It was so, everything was going so well. And I was so happy that I had this whole new element. Cause it was like, uh, it's one thing to hang artwork on a wall, but it's another thing to have people engaged and creating art. So I, I went home and my partner <laughs> is so supportive and kind and like really loves buying expensive a tech equipment that's probably why i have this ring light and this tripod and this camera and my laptop and <laughs> thank you babe for buying all these things but he went out of his way to go buy an oculus just off a whim he really wanted one he was like well you can you do have your exhibition but i also really want to play beat saber so i was like which is like another which is like a game with like controls and yeah he bought an oculus just because he wanted to and so I'd arrive at the house and I, was, I got to practicing at home on Tilt Brush. And after I'd uh, laid the foundations of the exhibition, I had found a venue, I had uh, registered for Sala, I had the name of the exhibition. The, the next thing to do was create promotional material. So a poster, a flyer, things you could put up and like with the date of the exhibition and the name of it and just to make it all pretty and um, so I designed a poster it was bright pink beautiful loved it was great and I was just putting them all up uh, through the city I was putting them uh, legally in alleyways and <laughs> I put them in a you know a studio I was at, at the time called Mixed Spice Creative I had them printed at a place called Officeworks I know everyone hates Officeworks but they work well for me <laughs> and I created a Facebook page and I was on my way to making this happen. At this stage, I think it was probably maybe a couple weeks before the exhibition, I was really pushing it. So I, I made sure that I had enough time to really push it because I am a small artist. It takes a lot of time for me to like gain momentum and gain hype 
or like an event because it's not like I have like a million people I can be like this is happening this weekend be there now you know it takes like a word of mouth and people telling their friends and family members telling other family members and for people to like gain that momentum just after I had made the poster I remember I'd sent a couple of pretty professionally worded emails to a bunch of small magazines in my city and I think because my exhibition was a part of, of Sala um, a lot of magazines didn't get back to me. Uh, seeing as Sala, like, uh, I think back at it now, Sala is uh, in connection with another magazine called The Adelaide Review. The Adelaide Review design and put together um, the Sala booklet, which has all of the exhibitions and events that are a part of Sala in it. And they release it and stuff like that, and they send it out to people. And so I think that's why I didn't get emails back. Like, cause I thought that my exhibition was like different and unique, unique, but I guess they must get a lot of emails from small artists. And also I think that it's not interesting to them because I'm small, like who am I? You know, I guess if I was like someone bigger, maybe I would have been noticed, but small little fish like this doesn't get noticed. I really wanted to do a mural. As you walked into the venue, they had like a staircase, which was like stairs here and then another stairs down to like the underground, hence why it's called basement. So what I really wanted to do is ask the owners if I could paint the entire wall going down the stairs with a mural and like a really, really crazy mural, like a big blue mural with like clouds and aliens and you know, girls. And so I got the courage to go up to them and ask and they said, yes. And they were like, yeah, do it, do it. You know, I was just in shock after that. I was like, thanks. Like the freedom I was given was so great. I just was, with my, my first solo show, the freedom was really just made me feel so much more comfortable and it was awesome. They had decided, they had trusted me enough. They would give me a key so I could stay after hours. I was a little scared though, um, seeing I was like in the city and I was like alone some of the time and like it was this base, underground basement place, but it was really modern and nice. So like, I wasn't too scared. Although there were like teenagers who would like smoke in the alleyway and they were really loud and like yelling, but it's okay that, you know, it's something a little scary. They, they can't get in the big door. <laughs> the door was shut, so they weren't gonna murder me, which was great. So I decided, hey, seeing as I'm creating a mural, why don't I create a time lapse and, we can, and I can use it as like a uh, publicity for the exhibition on Instagram and Facebook. And so I placed this camera that I'm using right now and I created like a time lapse of me painting. I wasn't wearing makeup, I was there alone. I'm sorry, I should have dressed up for it, but whatever. Anyway, it took me a couple of days to finish, seeing as like I am terrible with my schedule and I yeah, just should have made a schedule, should have come in at like 9am in the morning, but I'm more the place. I want to come in at 12 this day and I'll leave at this hour, you know? So after the mural was done, I decided, hey, let's bring all my artwork into the building. <laughs> let's bring it all in, let's lay it on the ground so that it will be easier so I can come in and just hang it whenever I want. I packed my car full of my artwork, drove over there. <laughs> The thing is I was going to hang all of this artwork myself and it started to daunt on me that this is a lot to hang up. This is a lot to do on my own. <laughs> I'm not some famous person who has assistance, I'm just me. Just some crazy girl who paints pictures who wants to hang on a wall and that's exactly what I was doing. I had, I put them all on the ground and I started to hang them. And they had a slimline system at the time so it was pretty easy. They just, you know, you just put the little hook thing on the back of the paintings and so I got all the paintings on the walls and then I started to number them and I numbered every single one of them just randomly and then I made a price list and I underprice a lot of my artwork which pisses me off that I do that to myself and you shouldn't do that to yourself. Um, I think I might do another video about that too. Um, I was very happy with myself and I looked on the, at the walls and I went, this is going to work, this is actually going to happen. And then it set in. Um, I don't, I didn't know how, I didn't know how I was going to make people want to come. I know I had VR and I had artwork and I was like, what are they going to eat? You know, what are they going to drink? So I spoke with the owners and they decided that they were going to set up a little bar. So after we organized the bar, I was freaking out and I was like, what am I going to do for food? And then I had this fantastic idea that I would make my own cakes. I was like, I'm going to make them alien themed and they're going to be really cute. And I was looking up Pinterest tutorials. Um, it isn't that easy. The cakes turned out a disaster the first the night before the exhibition. So on the day of the exhibition, I decided just to like run down to Coles <laughs> in the city and grab like every cake I could find. I, I grabbed like 
every little individual party cake I could find and I just put them on a plate and arranged them really nicely. That was the catering for my exhibition, was just a pile of cakes in the corner of the room. Yep. So at this time I had got the poster, I hadn't gotten emails back from any magazines, I <laughs> had my artwork on the walls, my mural was created and I was pushing on social media, I was pushing on Facebook and it was a lot on me. I had this constant fear that no one was going to come and then my fear that no one would show doubled. It turns out on the same night that my exhibition was being held there was another event going on. It was an event with three artists much larger than me and it was on the exact same night as mine and I was freaking out. It was called The Peace Project. The idea of their event is that it's held at a winery and three artists create quite large artworks using aerosol and whichever one is the best gets picked and gets to be put on a wine, so like a wine bottle, like it's like a, becomes like a wine label. The three artists battle it out and there's drinks and live music and I was freaking out because a lot of people were talking about it and I would go to the Facebook page and lots of people were going to it and lots of people were talking about it, like I'm talking like thousands of people. I'm pretty sure that they were all going to go to this one event and I don't think anyone was going to go to my little VR exhibition. <laughs> well that was okay, but I was very scared at the time. I think about maybe a couple days before the exhibition was about to go ahead and everything was happening and I had done all I could do. I started to receive messages around this time from people <laughs> that I thought were supportive and kind friends telling me that they weren't able to make it and that was that was really shitty and I was pretty upset about it <laughs> around this time because I'd put a lot of work in um, and I didn't uh, they didn't really give me a reason that they weren't able to come and then <laughs> yeah we'll get around to that <laughs> all I was hoping is that if I put in all this effort at least the people that count the most will be there and at least they'll have fun like because VR is like super fun, like how could you not have fun with it, you know what I mean? And so after all of this, the opening night comes around. So the exhibition itself was scheduled for 6.30. So me and my partner arrived very early in the morning just to make sure that everything was perfect all day leading up to the show itself. And we were doing finishing touches and we were making sure that we had everything we needed. And I broke down, I broke down and I cried. It was just me and my partner there um, and I had just looked around. I looked around at everything I had done and I cried. I cried because I I didn't really have a reason. <laughs> and I was just proud of myself. I was, part of me was proud of myself just for the fact that I had put this whole thing together and that I was only 21 and that <laughs> I had never done it before uh, for myself. I cried. I cried on his shoulder and I threw a little tantrum. <laughs> it was just a lot. And, I remember like worrying that my makeup was ruined and we, we had uh, we had like searched for like a dress because because I was so busy like organizing the whole exhibition I didn't even know what I was going to wear and I remember like two days before the exhibition we had <laughs> we had decided that we were going to run around like my center and try and find me a dress and <laughs> I found this one dress it was like a, a black like little strappy strappy dress and I had like a lot of body issues. I still do have a lot of body issues and I was like really nervous about my little tummy and like my body and oh, I was just crying and I was just a mess just all during the day. 6.30 rolled around and the first person to arrive at my exhibition was my sister's friend Daniel and he was so funny and he grabbed a beer and he was relaxing he was saying how great the artwork was and it was a big relief to me. I was like okay if we can get a bunch of other people to come that would be great. <laughs> My sister arrived, and then my mom arrived, and then my auntie. And I had my full support circle with me. I had my boyfriend, my sister, my auntie, and my mom all there with me, around me, and they were just so supportive and kind to me. It was about 6.45 to about 6.50 at this time, just almost 7 o'clock, and people were walking through the door, and I was so happy. All of my friends from my art studio arrived, and it, the room just seemed a lot more crowded. Like, it was already a small venue, but like, people were coming in like 10, 10 people came in and then with my family there and like people were walking around they were grabbing drinks and going on the virtual reality and looking at the artwork and saying asking how I was and talking to me and I just felt really loved and I was so ha so happy that they were there because all of this fear just went away it just was gone because I was had my friends I had my family there it was just this big party it was like a big birthday party and I was so happy and I looked around at the room and I just realized wow a lot of people heard about this 
and a lot of people are here right now and they're here for me and my artwork and I was like I was um I was I was told in tears this time I'm a super sensitive person I was talking to my friend and I was suddenly approached by this really strange guy and he came up to me and I just got this really weird feeling and I turn around and he is wearing a black fedora black leather gloves and a black trench coat He's okay. He was he was alright. He, he was an old man, but he was just a very strange guy. Um, seeing as like everyone around me is like, you know, dressed quite like mod. They were really modern and stuff. And this guy looks like he's straight out of like L.A. Noir. Like he looks like he is like going to tie someone to train tracks in a second. That's just my opinion. He starts asking me these strange questions about this very specific uh, paintings that I've done that were for an exhibition called Acetate, which was a film noir exhibition. And he kind of takes me over. He's like, come here, come here. And I go, I'm like, okay, uh, yeah. And I was like, oh, I'll talk to you after this is my friend. And I walk over and I've got my three paintings on the wall. They're called, they're, they're, the paintings were a triptych. So it was a series of three paintings uh, side by side that create like a story. Uh, and he was like, oh, so tell me about this painting. I was super, I was super awkward because the triptych is it's about something very naughty seeing as the group exhibition was film noir i did a painting of a geisha making love to an alien <laughs> and then a noodle neck man coming through and like peeking through the window he was asking me questions about it like what's the theme and like what you know what does it mean and i was just a bit like oh well it, it's just i i uh, was researching film noir and i there's a couple things in film noir that definitely stand out which is like sex and violence and and you know adultery and betrayal and i thought that it was uh just an interesting composition and i was very inspired by the work of toshio seiki and how he has a lot of people peeking through like paper screen doors and things and like viewing very strange situations and then uh after i told him that um that was about film noir he starts asking me like well i wasn't even asking him it was almost like interrogating me he was like what's your top five favorite film noir movies <laughs> and i was like um and so i couldn't really tell you i don't know that much about movies and he was like okay well I'll come back in a little bit and then I'll ask you have some time to think about it and I was sitting there like so I just felt really uncomfortable about it but I let it slide um, and I was just hanging out with people and everything was great people were eating the cakes I left in the corner of the room so as I'm talking to another friend he comes up to me again and he goes so have you thought of those movies yet in a very rude way and I was like um so I, 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 I like her and I felt very like on the spot and I was like, I, uh, well, have you, have you ever played, uh, <laughs> have you ever played LA Noir? Like it's a video game about like film noir. It's like themed around film noir. It's super cool. And I was just like feeling really anxious and like shaking. I was like, um, yeah. And he's like, no, I haven't. I haven't, I haven't played that game before. Like that. It's really weird. I was just really like off put. I was like, oh, okay. I was just like, okay, it's. This is weird. He's not leaving and I'm free. I'm frozen. I'm just looking at him really awkwardly like So he'd asked me if I'd thought of those film noir movies and I went, oh, well, I don't really know many movies I know Sin City and I smiled and laughed and he didn't laugh. And he's like, what's that? I was like, oh, it's like a like a modern take on film noir Like it's like a modern like a like a neo noir film and it's black and white and like you everyone knows Sin City It's like it was like a blockbuster, like, everyone knows that movie. Yeah, the room was super crowded and everyone was like going about their business and no one was really noticing that he was like making me feel uncomfortable. And like all of a sudden I blurted out and was like, you're making me uncomfortable. <laughs> because he was just staring at me. He was just wanted, I don't know what he wanted from me. And then he like scoffed, like, huh, like that, like rude. And then like walked away and I was like, so then I walked off and was just doing my thing. I was checking on people playing VR and I was checking on the bar and I was checking on the cakes, making sure they were still on the corner of the room. People love the cakes. I was so happy about the cakes. And then I look over and he's sitting there. He's like sitting with two other strange middle-aged men that I've never seen before. And they're not looking at the artwork. They're just sitting there by the door. Nothing really happened with it. Like I, I kind of ignored it and I walked away. I was like, oh, they're just like, maybe they're just old and they're resting. <laughs> Like, I sound like I'm being awful, but like it did make me uncomfortable because these men, like, they didn't look at the type of people who would like my type of artwork. Like, the, like, it never gets cold enough here to 
for you to need gloves. Never. Why are you wearing gloves? Oh, you own you, but like, old man interrogating me wearing gloves, it's weird. Despite the creepy guy with the fedora, things were going really good. So the night was dying down and it was just me, my boyfriend, and my sister. And we ended up, <laughs> when everyone left, we ended up just putting on Beat Saber on the projector screen and just playing it. <laughs> and then packing up, of course. And we were packed, like, uh, just ourselves. We, we were able to leave the artwork up because the exhibition was going to run for two more weeks after the initial opening night ended. So as I mentioned earlier, when a few of my friends messaged me and told me they weren't able to make it, I was absolutely devastated, but I thought that, oh, it's maybe, maybe they're just sick or they've, you know, I don't know, they just weren't able to come. It turned out, um, I, on the night of my exhibition, um, they ended up going to the Peace Project. I am still really happy that, like, the people that did show up, they enjoyed it. And, like, I feel like the people who didn't come, they missed out. You missed out on a fantastic exhibition. <laughs> fantastic corner of the room cakes and alcohol and VR and artwork and weird guys with fedoras. They missed out. So the end of the night, we all had a great time, but it wasn't over yet. The exhibition had to run for two more weeks. I was to watch the gallery space for a few days out of the week. So immediately after the opening night, I fell into this deep, dark depression where I was filled with constant anxiety and negative self-talk. I think that that is a big thing for me. I do that all the time. The VR did not continue for the two weeks after because it was a lot to like put up and like organize and I, I couldn't do that every single day I went in to like watch the gallery space. I remember my partner was super stressed um, after the exhibition because he had put a lot of work into helping me make this happen and I love him for it and he's always so supportive of me and I felt awful that I had um that I had asked so much of him. So the two weeks passed of the exhibition being open and I was a wreck. I was a mess. I remember the exhibition was supposed to end, supposed to end on the Saturday and I didn't even come in to watch the gallery. I couldn't do it. I couldn't get out of bed. Um, I had agreed with the owner of the basement that I would come in and watch it and I just couldn't. I couldn't at the end. I was so tired. I was so tired and run down and sad and angry. So I took down all the artwork and packed it away. I put it in my car and I drove home. We cleaned up the place and it was like I was never there except for the mural, <laughs> that giant mural that I had created. I felt this high of excitement and anticipation for the exhibition, but now it's over, you know, it was over and like, it was like it was over in a flash and like it was just the come down was the worst i remember like i i had opened my instagram one day and i got a message from the owners of basement and they're like hey would it be okay if you came in and painted over the the mural you did it's like a lot and uh we want to make sure it's just clean and white and i i at the time i was a complete disaster i was angry at my at i was angry at everybody i was just so furious i was like no one likes my artwork like you know it was just a mess now looking back i can understand that like we kind of did agree that i could paint it and like you know they didn't want the mural the first they were doing it so they were just letting me paint it so it was okay if they painted over it so i came in and they provided the white paint and as soon as the mural was created it was gone uh it was it was gone i had it up for the exhibition period but it's fair like i painted over it and i remember like feeling kind of weirdly relieved that it was being painted over because of all of the memories i had they were kind of it felt like it was a little bit holding me back like it was a great memory of the exhibition but the come down from like that excitement having that up was just a reminder of how good it felt and how that it's already gone and happened you know and it was just a white wall and i remember telling myself Jade, this is just a fresh beginning for another artist to create a brand new mural for their exhibition. And it's not as bad as it seems. And I left feeling weirdly happy. It's almost like when I painted over the mural, it was like all those negative self-talk and all the negative thoughts, like they disappeared. They were just painted over, you know? <laughs> they were painted over just like the mural. And, um, I, and I feel like all that remains of the exhibition is like the happy thoughts and the the memories and the memories of like friends like laughing and having fun i think back at earth invaders and despite the mental anguish anxiety anger and weird creepy guys with fedoras <laughs> i do remember all of the great things about the exhibition 
I remember my friends smiling and people laughing and people enjoying my artwork. And despite having to paint over my mural and a lot of things going a little awry for my first exhibition and it being just a really big situation sometimes. <laughs> but despite all of that, I wouldn't change a thing. It was my first exhibition and to be honest, I was super proud of myself. And would I do it again? Probably. <laughs> Am I crazy for that? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> so that was my first solo exhibition, Earth Invaders. And I loved it. <laughs> if you're starting your first solo exhibition and you're scared, um, I commend you and I know you can do it and I believe in you. And if you want to do something wild like VR or something like that, I, I say go for it and don't be afraid because it comes with a lot of emotions and it, you know, you're putting yourself out there and it's scary, but that's art, you know? That's what art is, is just putting yourself out there. If, you know, is it scary? Yes. Should you do it? Absolutely. You can do it. I know you can. I believe in you and I hope that you are staying unapologetically you. And have a wonderful day. Mwah. <laughs>